Hello and welcome. My name is Elizabeth Bielman. I am the founding executive director of the North Carolina Chamber Music Institute, NCCMI. I'm also the associate principal cellist with the North Carolina Symphony and curator of our opening NCCMI Impact Series Concert One. This is a pre-concert audio insights recording meant meant to offer helpful and interesting information about the upcoming concert Mendelssohn and more. NCCMI is funded in part by the City of Raleigh based on recommendations of the Raleigh Arts Commission. In addition, NCCMI is supported by the United Arts Council of Raleigh and Wake County, as well as the NC Arts Council, a division of the Department of Natural and Cultural Resources. The NCCMI Impact Series launched six years ago. From the beginning, our goal has been to highlight diversity and inclusion, shining a spotlight on outstanding contemporary and unfairly neglected composers. We aim to increase access to classical music with free concerts, and because we are primarily an educational organization, it's important to us to model positive change for our students. Our series is different in that it features emerging young artists alongside NC Symphony and faculty musicians on certain of the concerts. This gives our students, faculty and guest artists, an opportunity to mix and mingle, creating an inspiring experience for performers and audiences alike. Each year, NCCMI commissions a composer to write a new chamber music piece for us. These works are intended to be accessible to performers at both the professional and at the advanced student level. In this way, NCCMI is expanding both the repertoire and access for present and future generations. Among our past commissioned composers are Kerry-based composer Chrissy Ricker, NC State's Peter Ascom, and NCCMI alumni cellist and Los Angeles-based composer, Quentin Blosh. We encourage you to check out all of these wonderful composers. For NCCMI's most recent commission, we are working with an amazing composer who has deep North Carolina roots. James Dargan is a musician and writer originally from Durham, North Carolina, who is now based in New York City. He is an amazing singer who also works as a composer, violinist, writer, and teacher. A musician since he was a child, James has shared his voice and carefully curated programs all over the U.S. and Europe. He is a specialist on spirituals and other black music, and he relishes writing for black singers. He is currently writing two operas and has just finished his first mass. Career highlights include solo work with the Boston Pops and operatic work with Esperanza Spalding and jazz great Wayne Shorter. James is a founding member of the consortium Ring Shout, and you can follow him at jamestdargan.com. Starting this year and continuing over the next three years, James will be writing one movement of a string quartet per year for us. This is an unusual model for a commission, since most of the time composers create a whole work all at once. However, we have found that our unfolding model allows NCCMI to commission a significant piece by a composer of note. This also allows us to build a stronger relationship over time between composers, students, and audiences, thus having a bigger impact on the community. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit about James's wonderful new piece for NCCMI. It is a string quartet, and that means it's a piece for two violins, viola, and cello. The full title of the piece is Honey Rock Wood Valley. This title was derived from two sources that reflect James's childhood in Durham. First of all, Honey Rock is the name his mom gave to the home school where she taught James and his brother. And Wood Valley is the name of the street where he grew up. This movement is based upon a song that James wrote. He used Langston Hughes' poetry for the words of his song. Here are those lyrics. The Dream Keeper by Langston Hughes. Bring me all of your dreams, you dreamers. Bring me all of your heart melodies that I may wrap them in a blue cloud cloth away from the 
two rough fingers of the world. And here is James himself introducing and then singing his song. Hey y'all, this song is the seed of a lot of the musical material from my uh, first movement of my string quartet that you're all going to come here on November 10th. Uh, and this song is called The Dream Keeper. The piece is clearly very personal to James, and I think everyone will be able to hear that in the performance of the quartet. From a performer's perspective, it is an intricate but also intimate work that gives voice to each instrument in turn. As the program curator, I was inspired first of all by the idea of Mendelssohn and more, how a concert experience can build upon the traditional classical repertoire with other pieces that inspire unusual insights and connections. I was also struck by the idea of the importance of each person's voice, whether we are talking about composers, performers, or the instruments being played, and how those voices can come together to create something unique and wonderful. The program opens with James's quartet, played by my regular string quartet, Aurora Musicalis. Our quartet includes Emily Glover, Aaron Zangut, Amy Mason, and myself. We are all members of the North Carolina Symphony. Following the quartet, there is a deeply affecting work for a single instrument, the cello. Bonnie Thrawn, the North Carolina Symphony's principal cellist and, incidentally, my stand partner in the orchestra, will perform Hum by Derek Skye. As a composer writes, this is a piece that imitates the human voice. It is a personal meditation meant to sound as if one is improvising a song in an intimate moment. From the introspective voice of solo cello, we move to the famous Octet in E-flat Major, Opus 20, by Felix Mendelssohn. Joining Emily, Aaron, Amy, Bonnie, and myself are more of our North Carolina Symphony colleagues, violinists Janine Winton and Jessica Ryu, and the symphony's principal viola player, Sam Gold. A work of extraordinary invention, Mendelssohn's Octet, calls up every conceivable combination of voices. Written in 1825, when the composer was only 16 years old, it is a work of youthful energy, colorful interplay, and true brilliance. One critic summed it up as one of the miracles of 19th century music. It is hard to believe that Mendelssohn composed such a mature work at such an early age. Keep in mind that the string octet was a new genre of chamber music at the time, and Mendelssohn's work was the first of its kind. At this time, Mendelssohn's own musical tastes were moving from the classical to the romantic, and his music really shows us that interesting combination with beautiful themes and a medium that sounds almost orchestral in its moments of fullest sonority. In fact, Mendelssohn said of this piece that, quote, the octet must be played by all the instruments in symphonic orchestral style. Pianos and fortes must be strictly observed and more strongly emphasized than usual. There are four movements of the piece. We start with the first movement that features soaring themes and varied textures. The second movement is marked andante. It is written in a 6-8 rhythm of the Italian Siciliano dance form. Mendelssohn was known for his wonderful scherzo movements, and this third movement is a true gem. His sister Fanny said the movement was inspired by Goethe's Faust, where 
the writer actually quotes Shakespeare's uh, description of the wedding of the fairy king and queen Oberon and Titania from A Midsummer Night's Dream. The final movement of the quartet is full of counterpoint or conversations between the voices. Listen carefully and you will recognize a quote from Handel's Messiah. And he shall reign forever and ever. All of this music builds and builds to a very exciting conclusion. The Mendelssohn Octet is always a joyful experience for performers and audience alike, and we are thrilled to present it. This free concert is about 75 minutes long. It is open to the general public and will take place on Sunday, November 10th at 4 p.m. at Church of the Nativity in North Raleigh. Close seating is available, and there is also an accessible entrance to the church, please contact us at nccmi.office at gmail.com for more information or to request large print programs or other accommodations. While no admission fee is charged to attend, we invite our, our attendees to consider making a contribution in support of the Impact Series and scholarships for NCCMI students. Check out other concert extras, including... A webinar on November 3rd, which is hosted by NCCMI Board President Walti Rasulala and features composer James Dargan and Dr. Timothy Hawley. Contact nccmi.office at gmail.com to register. If you can't make it to the Impact concert in person on November 10th, you can still catch the free streamed version on the NCCMI YouTube channel on Sunday, November 24th at 5 p.m. This virtual replay of the concert will feature multiple camera angles and audio captioning. There is no need to pre-register. Thank you so much for your interest in the North Carolina Chamber Music Institute Impact Series. Visit our website at nccmi.org to make your secure contribution. While there, you can learn more about all our upcoming events and our comprehensive music education program for students aged 7 to 19. We look forward to seeing you soon.